Hi, my name's <laughs> No, nope, that didn't work. Come on, mouth, get it together. Hi, my name's Rachel, and today, dearly beloved, we are gathered here to resurrect a topic. The topic is the woman who resurrected herself. Everyone knows that I budging hate doing part two videos. But unfortunately for me, after I posted the last video about Susan Meachin, two things happened. One, the goddamn New York Times article where Susan finally spoke on the record. And number two, everyone involved in this that I mentioned in the last video, literally all of them, minus Susan herself that I know of, found my video and commented on it. And now we're gonna go over the New York Times article and I'll give my two cents as I do. And we're gonna do part two much to my chagrin but what we are really here to do is I didn't really care about the New York Times article I wasn't gonna say anything until I had talked to Samantha A. Cole and gotten so many comments from the people involved in my last video <sighs> Um, I really want to give a platform to the people that Susan was a dick to. I sincerely hope that they all can sue her. But in case that does not work out, I hope this video helps um, because I would like to help them to feel like they have set the record straight and have had their voices heard. Um, I got a couple things, a few things wrong and some things were like misunderstood, misinterpreted. So I want to set the record straight. First, let's talk about the New York Times article that came out. A, de a Fake Death in Romance Landia by Ellen Berry. By the way, if you have not watched part one, please go watch now about Susan Meachin, the author who faked her death. It is first thing down below. And also, before I continue, I have to sing thank you for being a friend to my Therapy Bills patrons. Elena, Amanda, Ashley, Carlin, Claire, Ella, Eric, Harley, Jack, Jill, John E, Kate B, Quinn, Lee, Lex, Molly, Rain, SJ, Scarlett, Sierra, and Zachary. Thank you all so much for being a friend. If you want to join Patreon, the link is down below. A Fake Death in Romance Landia by Ellen Berry. A Tennessee homemaker entered the online world of romance writers and it became, in her words, an addiction. We all know how I feel about using the word addiction where it does not actually medically apply. Things went downhill from there. Late Monday morning, two police officers drove up a gravel driveway on to a mobile home in Benton, Tennessee, a tiny town in the foothills of Southern Appalachians to question Susan Meachin, a 47-year-old homemaker and author of romance novels. I did not think she was 47. I thought she was, I thought she was like in her 60s. Why did I think that she was not that young? She had been expecting them. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Uh, for a week, she had been the focus of a scandal within the online subculture of self-published romance writers, part of the literary world sometimes known as Romance Landia. If you would like to hear about the drama that goes on in Romance Landia from like a like a distilled perspective, like a, what I'm saying is basically that I have a creator for you that talks about romance books, but also talks about um, the goings on in Romance Landia, and it is Izzy from Happy for Now. I will link down her channel. I love her so much. She's the best. You're the best, Izzy. Everybody, shout out Izzy. The police wanted to talk to Miss. Meachin about faking her own death. In the fall of 2020, a post announcing she had died appeared on her Facebook page where she had often described her struggles with mental health and complained of poor treatment at the hands of other writers. Yeah, see, I just, I just don't think that... <sighs> Nope, I'm just gonna keep reading. The post apparently written by her daughter led some to assume she had died by suicide. It sent fans and writers into a spiral of grief and introspection, wondering how their sisterhood had turned so poisonous. But she wasn't dead. Two weeks ago, to the shock of her online community, Miss Meachin returned to her page to say she was back and now in a good place and ready to resume writing under her own name. She playfully concluded, let the fun begin. Ellen, Ellen, I feel like we disagree a little bit on how she concluded it because to me, it was not playful. To me, that is insidious. Let the fun begin. Let the fun begin. Okay. Anyway, I just think it's funny that you think that that's cute in any way. I don't think that the, I don't think it was playful. I think it was gross. I think she should say sorry for that and a lot of other things, but add that to the list for sure. Other writers seeing this were not in the mood for fun. You don't say. I wonder why. Describing deep feelings of betrayal, they have called for her to be prosecuted for fraud, alleging that she faked her death to sell books or solicit cash donations. They have reported her to the FBI cyber crimes unit and the local sheriff and vowed to shun her and her work. Some have questioned whether she exists in real life. Yeah, I actually got 
comments that said that they thought that all of these authors who were involved in this were all the same person. That's that's not true. Uh, like no joke, that's not true. Uh, Susan was pretending to be other people, but the people affected by this are not pretending, are not Susan trying to get more sympathy. They were actually affected by this and it's shitty what she did. Miss Meachin does exist. In a series of interviews, she said the online community had become a treacherous place for her for a person in her mental state as she struggled to manage a new diagnosis of bipolar disorder. I think it's a very dangerous mix up, especially if you have a mental illness. I would log on and get in and at some point in the day, my two worlds would collide and it would be hard to differentiate between book world and the real world. It was like they would sandwich together. I'm confused by this because book world is still part of the real world. Like you, it is a subculture that you can or cannot interact with, but it exists. It is real. Like you, I don't, I don't understand. And like, I, people with bipolar disorder that it does not, I just feel like this is a really weird, it feels like she's trying to say, well, I'm bipolar. So, you know, what are you going to do? Not this. You could just not do this. You could not, you know, fake your death that would be great. When she first was introduced to the book world, as she calls it, she was alone at home for long stretches while her husband, a long, long haul truck driver, traversed the country. She read romance novels, sometimes plowing through more than one a day. She'd always been a reader despite dropping out of school in the ninth grade to marry. Wow, I did not know that about her. Holy, I missed that while I was going over this article. She dropped out in the ninth grade to get married? Wait, why did she need to drop out of school to get married? Can somebody explain that to me? Does that sound fishy to anybody else? Anyway, the online romance community was a revelation to her like an escape, a timeout, a break from everyday reality. Over time though she began, oh it began to feel more like quicksand. Over the next three years she self-published 14 novels and maintained a near constant social media presence. She was also diagnosed with bipolar disorder, a disease characterized by periods of manic activity that can alternate with deep depression. The book world made her disorder worse she said. Writing often sent her into a manic state and conflicts on the pa on the fan pages left her, conflicts on the fan pages left her seething. Oh my god this is so bad for my my dyslexia. She knew she would fuck. Oh my god, I'm struggling today. I'm so sorry. She knew she should walk away and she tried, but she said it was an addiction. Every time she tried to log off for good, her phone would ping. Romance writers groups can be fizzy, exhilarating places. There is sexy cover art. There is snappy industry jargon like HEA, <laughs> dubcon, dubious consent, reverse harem. <laughs> snappy industry jargon. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard it referred to as that way. At their best, the groups are a foundation of support for indie authors who self-publish their work and help each other with covers and marketing, which is known as pimping. It is? That's news to me. I'm not part of like the indie author community though, so I wouldn't know. At their worst, they can be epicenters of nonstop drama, said Sarah Wendell, the co-founder of the romance blog Smart Bitches Trashy Books. <laughs> There's another thing that I've never heard of. <laughs> Smart bitches, trashy books. <laughs> I'm gonna name my group chat that. Lou, go change the group chat name if you're watching this. Miss Meachin's fan page, The Ward, a humorous reference to a psychiatric hospital. Is it a humorous reference? As somebody who has been committed against their will, I do not think that that is funny. She complained bitterly about colleagues who she said she had helped but had failed to help her in return and threatened to leave the indie world. Every day it got to the point I'd rather be dead than deal with the industry and the people who swear they were friends. She wrote in September of 2020. I've had some dog eat dog, dog eat dog. I'm sorry. Every time I hear dog eat dog, all I think is this clip. Business is a dog eat dog world and I am a shark. But this one is by far the most vicious with the least amount of money. She described her psychiatric treatment and alluded to past suicide attempts. Dear scary people in my head, I truly understand we've been doing your story for over a year. Waking me up with muscles screaming at me to get up and finish does not motivate me. Miss Meachin's psychiatrist confirmed with her permission that she is under his treatment for bipolar disorder and that she has been prescribed medications for anxiety, depression, and psychosis. He would not comment any further. Her online friends worried about her and some reached out to express her concern, but there's a limit to what they could do, said Kimberly Grell, who became friends with her through writing groups. She was pretty chaotic. It just seemed like every product, product that surfaced with her, she was in the middle of, and it turned to where she was the victim of it all. She sympathized with Miss Meachin's frustration, though, as it became clear that she might not be able to earn money with her writing. A lot of people that get into this type of business think they're going to make millions, like Stephen King or James Patterson. The reality is, it's a money pit. You are literally tossing your money into a pit, hoping someone will find you. And Miss Grell said, 
says that she actually left writing to uh, sell beaded jewelry last year. Susan's husband Troy said he came to see the book world as a danger to his wife's welfare. When she sent out samples of her work to other authors, she got the responses she got were often really brutal. When writing, she had periods of mania and psychosis. Sometimes he would come home and she would talk like a character from the book, like she was the indiv individual she was writing. He worried it was too dangerous to leave her alone during the day. It got to the point where it was like, enough is enough, he said, comparing the community's effect on her to a whirlpool. She was going round and round, he said, and the bottom was just right there. This reached a climax in the fall of 2020, according to Mr. and Miss Meachin and their 22-year-old daughter, who described the episode on the condition that her name not be used. Here's the thing. When I heard Susan Meachin had a daughter, I thought Susan was 65 years old and had like a 45-year-old daughter who had done this. I did not think that a 20-year-old would be involved in faking a death online. I just, I don't know. That's weird. Susan had taken a large dose of Xanax, enough to make her like a limp noodle, and she was not cognitive or responsive. Mr. Meachin said he instructed their daughter to announce her death online, he said. I told them that she is dead to the indie world, the internet, because we had to stop her period. She could not stop it on her own. In, even to this day, I'll take 100% of the blame, the accolades, whatever you want to call it. The accolades? Isn't accolades like a good thing? An award or privilege granted as a special honor. Okay, well, I don't think he meant accolades. Anyway, moving on. The post on Meachin's page said she had died two days earlier. Author Susan Meachin left this world behind Tuesday night for bigger and better things. Please leave us alone as we have no desire in this messed up industry. A follow-up post appeared on October 23rd. Sorry, thought everyone on this page knew my mom passed away. Dead people don't post on social media. The news of Miss Meachin's death radiated throughout the fan pages. Susan was well known in the community and had often reached out to new authors volunteering to provide cover art or help with marketing. Yeah, and we found out that a lot of her cover art was, you know, using images stolen from Disney. Again, ma'am, the mouse will sue you. Why would you do that? Cy Marie Johnson, who I referenced in the last video, said, Susan, I will never ever forget how kind you were to me. I only wish I, I only wish you would have known. <sighs> Oh my god, I'm so sorry. My dyslexia is so bad today. Okay, I can do this. I can do this. I only wish you would have known. I would have talked you through the night. I'd have defended you against your bully, she wrote. I will do everything I can to make a difference so your death is not in vain. And Cy Marie, who lives in Oregon, was so upset that she reached out to Susan Meachin's daughter online and offered to edit her mother's last book for free as a tribute, but the damage had been done, she said. Over the months that followed, many members, disgusted by the mean girlness of it all, migrated out of the community or deleted their accounts. It caused a huge shift in the community. There was a lot of drama, but this was the tidal wave. Nobody before had been got, had been gotten so abused that they wanted to commit suicide. The subject receded, replaced by other dramas, until January 2nd, when Miss Meachin reappeared on her fan page with news that she was still alive. Miss Meachin did not see it as a particularly big deal. Eager to resume writing under her own name, she had been considering such a move for about a year, she said. She sat down on the computer, she said, and hit enter before I could talk myself out of it. But you talked yourself into it for a year? Okay. I debated how to do this a million times and still not sure if it's right or not. Again, I'm gonna tell you, ma'am, it's not right. And none of this was. None of it is. There's going to be tons of questions and a lot of people leaving the group, I'd guess, but my family did what they thought was best for me and I can't fault them for it. For the first few hours, the response was muted. Then she put it, all hell broke loose. Her post was widely shared by Samantha A. Cole, a romance writer from the suburbs of New York City, along with a seething commentary. I was horrified, stunned, and livid, and I feel like I'd been kicked in the gut and the chest at the same time. Miss Cole, who previously worked as a police officer and asked to be identified by her pen name to avoid notice of the people she had arrested. More than anything, Miss Cole said she was hurt. She had gone into a major funk for months over Meachin's death, worried that she had not been a good friend. Worse, in the recriminations that followed, Miss Cole was accused on one fan page of bullying Miss Meachin, something both women said was untrue. Meaning, Susan says that Samantha A. Cole never bullied her. And to be quite honest, I never thought that Samantha A. Cole did. I never thought that anybody bullied Susan, to be honest. I feel like if they had, there would have been some screenshots that came forward in all of this. Instead, it just seems to me that Susan was a con artist. That's my view. Miss Cole, who describes herself as naturally suspicious, said about documenting Miss Meachin's false claims in a series of screenshots she provided, showing the screenshot showing that Miss Meachin ha had appealed to the group for financial help in medical emergencies, and noted that she returned the fan page under a new identity, TN Steel, effectively eavesdropping on her own mourners. If it was really about getting away, then why did Susan show back up under a pen name and never say anything and watch people as they mourned her? There's no good 
good answer for that. It was important to me because the people that agreed for her death for so long had a right to know that the whole thing was a hoax. That's what led me to do this, my anger and my sense of betrayal. I needed a way to vent. I don't fault Samantha for saying what any of what she said about finding out about this hoax at all. I think that I would have said worse because this is shitty behavior on Susan's part. Many authors who are angry say it was because they know so many people struggling with mental illness themselves and that it, it is despicable to falsify suicide for any reason. I feel majorly gaslit, said Cy Marie, who last week filed a report about the incident with the cyber crimes unit of the FBI. She said it doesn't seem like she is apologetic and she is trying to cast blame on other people, trying to get them to accept that she had a mental illness. That is, that is how I view it as well and I think that it's pretty sickening. Somebody left a comment saying that this makes people with bipolar look bad. I agree. I think that Susan, you know, trying to shuck it off on her family and then say, oh, it's because I'm bipolar. All of that is shitty. I too have been institutionalized. I too am mentally ill and I feel like I, I would never do this and most people I know who are mentally ill would never do this. So like something else is at play here, clearly beyond mental illness, for you to show back up under a pen name, take control over the group and why Watch people mourn your death. There's no excuse. As the scandal drew attention of the mainstream media outlets, uh, many of its senior figures drew a weary sigh. I do not think it's going to help. The romance industry's persona of being a bunch of overly emotional women, said Claire Brett, the president of Romance Writers of America. Ah, uh, Claire, yeah, listen, I get your problem there, the, the issue, but that is that is rooted in, in misogyny. <laughs> And you don't like, you don't combat misogyny by drawing a weary sigh over romance community drama. You say, hey, just because this is happening does not mean that we need to be misogynist, both men and women, and uh, say how stupid romance is because, you know, oh, they're all overly emotional women. That's just, that's just misogyny. Uh, so we should just combat that instead of being like, oh, this is making us look so bad and emotional. Like, shut up. Stop. Stop it. That's, no, that's not how we fight that. It's stupid. Stupid. That really annoys the shit out of me. Miss Meechan watched from Benton while the online backlash made headlines in Greece and Britain and France. Oh, I'm sure she did sit back and watch, just like she did for two years, which kind of feels to me like she did this because she was hoping for a little more attention uh, because it wasn't enough to watch people mourn her death from a fake account. Okay. Reporters from various countries were appearing in her DMs, which stressed her out. This meant, among other things, that her real and neighbors might read her novels, which fall on the racier end of the genre spectrum. For years, she has carefully separated her two identities, the romance writer and the homebody, but now they were smashing together. I thought they were smashing together before, and that's what made you mentally ill. But then you came out about it, and now they're getting smashed together? Which is it, Susan? Which one? She had not heard again from the police and sounded confident that she would not face charges, saying the family had not received substantial donations after her online death announcement. That sounds like a shit upon the people who donated. It wasn't substantial. It's okay, so they gave a little bit of money. That's what I hear reading that. God, this is so shitty. She had offered the detectives access to her bank accounts to prove it. She did admit feeling re remorse for the fans who grieved her loss. I'm sorry for their mourning, but from a legal standpoint, I did nothing wrong. I think fraud is wrong, Susan. I think it is. Morally, I might have done something wrong. Mm -hmm. No, morally you did do something wrong and you're still doing it actually. Still going. You could stop anytime now, Susan, but legally there's nothing wrong. Yeah disagree. If Miss Meechan was on the edges of a literary world before, she is now cast out of it. Her fan page has gone silent. Her inbox is full of angry messages from former friends. Looking back on the whole story, she says she regrets it all, starting with entering the romance groups. Entering the romance groups was never the problem. The problem was your behavior. It was your behavior. Okay. It wasn't good for me. No, it wasn't. I wish I had never met the book industry whatsoever. I think that all of us in the book industry wish that we had never met you either. She has set aside her plans to resume writing fiction for now to do with more media concerns. Someone is impersonating her on social media, issuing comments about the scandal, she said, and hoax Susans were bouncing around the internet saying God knows what. That's what's so funny about it, her husband said. You can be anyone you want to be on the internet. Yeah, you can be. And Susan chose to create a fake account to watch herself get mourned. You really can be, Mr. Meechan. You really can be anybody you want to be on the internet. And your wife certainly chose a certain kind of persona, didn't she? Let's get 
give a platform to several of the people affected, uh, the affected individual in, in this. But first, I need to issue a statement to Rhonda Butterbow. Um, Rhonda Butterbow, I was not making fun of your name, ma'am. Your name is awesome. Your name is what I would name. It's like the name equivalent of eating a warm biscuit with honey on it. Your name is delicious, ma'am. Okay. Uh, when I say that it sounds like the name of a nice English teacher from a middle grade novel, I mean that as a full blown compliment. Compliment. Ugh, I can't speak anymore. You sound like you are the Miss Honey to all of our Matildas. And honestly, God bless your excellent name. Give it up for Rhonda Butterwell. I love your name, ma'am. Okay, Lux Miller, who took, <clears throat> oh man, I'm running out of steam here. Lux Miller, who took part in the Bully King anthology, um, where the dedication was written to Susan. It was not written for Susan herself. The dedication said, you know, for Susan, or like in memory of Susan, something to that effect. Wanted to clear up a few things. Hey, hi, hello. There's still a bit of misinformation concerning this whole issue, but I thought I'd clear a few things up. I am not an elected representative on behalf of the community, but I am one of the authors in that anthology and have been in this drama since the beginning. Beginning. Candace is also a friend of mine. So the biggest thing, Susan Meachin is her real name. Yes, uh, it is. I could have digged a little harder to find out if that were true or not, but to be honest, I just didn't really do a great job uh, doing any sort of investigation. In my last video, I am going to say this again, um, and I'm, I'm going to repeat it later in the video, but I'm not a journalist. So sometimes my research is subpar. Mostly I'm just here to read screenshots. This has been confirmed by authorities in the Tennessee community where she lives where a fraud investigation is definitely happening. She has a host of other names. She used to spy on the community as they mourned her, but the one in that matters in this story is T.N. Steele. It was created less than a month after her death and eventually offered to take over her reader group from Susan's personal assistant because Connie, the personal assistant, had a lot going on in her life. She acquiesced to allow this author that had at the time been active in Susan's group for nearly a year. So there's that. Also, it should be noted that while Samantha was definitely outright accused of bullying Susan to death, I don't think they were much of friends, more like acquaintances in the same community. She is the one who blew the whistle after Susan returned, and rightfully so, after what she'd been accused of and saddled with for two years. She was absolutely blamed for it. Now the big one, the anthology. The Bully King anthology was not created because of Susan. It was actually created in response to a very successful indie author going after a newbie whose book debut was, whose debut book happened to have the same title as one of hers that released around the same time. She relentlessly bullied this author behind the scenes and tried to stop the release of the newbie's book. This anthology was created and named what it was to spite the bullying author as everyone involved took the side of the newbie author. The reason it is dedicated to Susan is because her death happened just ahead of its publication when bullying amongst the community was running rampant. So we put that dedication in the front as a foreword and a note against bullying. Yes, there's bullying in the stories, but that is a trope wholly unto itself and it's very popular among readers. I know, and I did snark on that in my video, and I maintain that. I'm sorry, I just don't think that bully romance is a good idea most of the time. The ones that I have read, I feel like they play into themes like misogyny that we need to be deconstructing and not fetishizing. So I understand you might feel differently, but I did snark on that. I know a lot of people read that, but I, I, I hold to what I said. That's just my opinion. The stories chosen were never done so in memory of Susan. The only part about the anthology that had to do with Susan is being dedicated to her, and the last line is the most important. It was our stance that bullying is fine in books but has no place in real life. I say this a lot on my channel, but books don't live in a vacuum. Mari from My Name is Marina she talks about this more and and does so a lot more eloquently than I can. She talks about how fiction does not live in a vacuum. It is both um, affected by and affects the world that we live in and that is why bully romance makes me uncomfortable. As for the donations, there was fundraising held after her death to raise funds for her family to help with burial costs and anything else they might need during the hard time of losing a loved one to suicide, something many of those who donated have personally experienced. They were vicariously feeling her family's grief and wanted to help. They easily could have left the donations alone in the accounts where they were sent and there wouldn't be an issue legally. Morally, well, she still didn't think she did anything wrong and will never accept that what she did was atrocious behavior even if it was quote-unquote legal, but the family kept those funds and apparently used them. She has also reneged on contracts she had at the time for covers, logos, editing, etc. That's where the biggest legal issue comes in. And it's interesting that Susan did not address that in the New York Times article. Thank you to Lux for commenting. I appreciate you. Candace Adams also had some things to say. Um, she wanted some things done. For First of all, the anthology was not
not written for Susan. It was written when Julie Huss attacked Andy Jackson for using the same title in her book, The Bully King. Susan's death happened just before publication, so we added a dedication for her out of respect that she didn't deserve. Samantha didn't bully her. She was just an easy target to blame. The anthology was not written for Susan. In fact, it was complete and about to be published when all of this happened. In response to someone taking, um, talking about that screenshot that was allegedly Samantha A. Cole, um, but Samantha, and we will talk about this more in a second, um, says adamantly that that was not her actual account, that it was a fake account. Um, Candace had this to say about that. It was never said. This is false information that has the potential to be very damaging to innocent people's careers. And she said that comment was proven to have been uh, come from a cloned account. It did not come from Samantha. This whole video is littered with false facts and finger pointing. Had you reached out to any of us, we would have given you receipts of facts. Assumedly that those two lines are directed at me because uh, I'm the one that made the video. Yeah. I don't know that there's proof that it came from a fake account because I did talk to Samantha and she didn't offer me any. If she had, I would have, I would, I would put it in the video because I, I am concerned with making sure that I, I give you guys the chance to say what you would like said. Um, if there is any proof and you want to link it down below, I am fine with that. Uh, I don't really have a horse in this race. Uh, my opinion is fuck Susan for this, but I don't really, don't really have a horse in this race beyond that. And, and just wanting you guys to have a chance to say to my, you know, fairly large following here, um, what you would like said. So if you have that proof, I, I don't mind you sharing it down below. But I, I do want to said that I am inclined more to believe Samantha than I am inclined to believe the guy who posted it. Um, he posted it and he said, see, Samantha admitted she was Su bullying Susan, which is not what the screenshot even says. So that makes me feel like, okay, that dude's a liar. <laughs> um, she didn't say that. So I don't know any of these people. And it's hard for me to say like one way or another who's telling the truth and who's exaggerating and who's flat out lying uh, beyond Susan, who I think is a flat out liar. But I lean more towards Samantha telling the truth and this not being her account that said this. Secondly, though, the whole this video is filled with false facts and finger pointing. And if you had reached out thing, I get being frustrated um, if people are talking about something that you're involved in and getting it wrong. My biggest pet peeve, peeve, pet peeve in life is being uh, accused of being uh, like of saying or doing something that I didn't do. I feel this like great urge to be like, no, I never did that. So I get it. But I'm not a journalist. <laughs> I am a 30 year old in her messy bedroom in front of her ring light and rainbow shelves. There's no journalism here. I talk to my camera and I read screenshots that I found on the internet and then I give commentary on and sometimes make dick jokes. Like this is not journalism. And secondly, I do not reach out to authors for my own safety. I know y'all are new here. I said this before. I know y'all are new here, but I get a lot of shit uh, for my reviews and I dealt with a lot of harassment in the last like six months. Sorry, I didn't text back my husband about chicken sandwiches. Again, not a journalist. <laughs> I'm over here reading this script and texting about chicken sandwiches. Like this is not journalism. I have no way of knowing that if I reach out to an author, if that author is connected to an author who has or will harass me. So for my own safety, I don't do that. That's just not what this whole thing is. <laughs> but I am willing to say when I got things wrong. So I'm doing this part two video in the hopes that it gives my viewers more context and understanding of the situation. I got some details wrong and I'd like the record to be set straight and I would like y'all to have a chance to say what y'all want to say. Which brings me to Samantha A. Cole. Um, Samantha A. Cole was the person accused of bullying Susan and then her original post is what went viral across like all social media, right? Um, and she wanted to be know that she states adamantly, including in my comments and my DMs, um, that screenshot that says that awful stuff about Susan being weak and that's why she took her own life. Samantha says that was not her and that was from a fake account that was made to like be like a duplicate account that looked like her so that it could say that and make it look like she said it. And it was posted in a group that she's not even and was never even a part of. Here's her statement. Samantha A. Cole here, that screenshot of me saying Susan was weak was another hoax. I never said that to anyone and I certainly didn't say it in a group I was never a member of. Someone made a fake profile in my name and used my profile pic at that time. Again, the comment was on a post in a group that I was not a member of and never was a member of. Seconds after the comment was made, the screenshot was taken and then the comment or post disappeared. So there was no way to track it back to the fake profile. It's easy to do. I know, I'm pretty social media savvy. <laughs> 
Jeez, I know. <laughs> I wish that we had proof, but I do still want Samantha to be able to say her piece. So even though I can't offer anybody proof, I I wanted Susan, or Samantha to be able to say what she wants said about this because she is a victim of Susan and I think that she has the right to be heard at the very least, right? There is only one picture of that screenshot. I've never seen another per version of it. If it was seen by several people, there would be multiple screenshots of it on both desktops and phones. I addressed this fake post when it first appeared two years ago and again last week when it started making a reappearance. People who know me, whether in person or online, have said the wording doesn't sound like anything I'd ever written before. Never have I started a post with saying, let's talk. The rest of it is not my style either. Also, I was one of the many people publicly grieving over the death of someone I thought was an online friend. Why would I suddenly go into a group I wasn't a member of to make a comment that was so different from anything else I said at the time? It's just like the fake Twitter account that was made a few days after Susan's resurrection that talked to her a reporter from Upstream. Several people, including myself, questioned the validity of the interview immediately for several reasons. One, it didn't sound like her. I, I actually went over all of this in, in my video, so I'm not going to read this part, but I agree. Um, if Susan and her former editor say that wasn't Susan, I believe her. And I think that the New York Times article proves that Susan says that that wasn't her. So again, anyone can make a fake account using someone else's info. We see it all the time on Facebook and make a screenshot, communicate with others. In fact, there was a screenshot that showed up supposedly of a chat between me and Susan and an unknown party after it was set to after. Oh man. Oh no. I just sounded like my cousin from, from Connecticut. After <laughs> it was sent to an author who thought of Susan as a mentor several years ago, the profile it came from disappeared. I've known several people who have taken their own lives, people I work with and others I was close to when I was younger. I've never said any of them were weak. Mental illness is to blame, not the individual. There are people out there who love to stir up drama and make fake accounts to do it. I was very upset when I heard of Susan's alleged death because it had been a while since we chatted. Since we'd never met and we were only online acquaintances, I was never aware of her having mental issues, nor was I aware of any bullying. Susan said in herself in the New York Times article also stated that I was not one of the alleged bu bullies. None of them have ever been named to my knowledge, but she told a, pro a reporter flat out that I had never bullied her. Listen, again, I just think that it's interesting that Susan said she was bullied and has time to make fake accounts, but doesn't have time to show screenshots of the alleged bullying. I get that everyone wants to talk about this incident because it stirs everyone up and brings in readers, listeners, followers, etc. But please make sure you have all the facts correct. So again, I'm not a journalist. I just read the screenshots and give my stupid commentary. Uh, and I do this because people ask me to. A lot of people will ask me to do different videos and sometimes I do them, sometimes I don't because I got asked so many times to do this one. I sat on it, tried to get as many screenshots as I could and then I did it. But as we can see, it wasn't enough and I've ended up having to do a part two anyway. So yeah, I do my best, but again, this isn't journalism. It's just me. Rolling Stone magazine is a prime example. They were in such a hurry to be the first media outlet to write about it that they got numerous facts wrong and had to post an update when certain things were pointed out to them, mainly stating that Susan's PA and her sister knew about the hoax. This was because they misinterpreted one of my original screenshots when her PA talked about her sister who'd passed away. She was referring to her real sister who died of cancer a year after Susan's alleged death. So I did actually try. Um, I didn't want to be the first to do this. A lot of, a lot of other creators who I love and respect did talk about this first um, and I understand like this is our job this is how we make money so understand them wanting to be like the first um, I because of OCD even about doing my videos like to have everything in one condensed place which is why I hate doing part twos <laughs> I've had to do a three-part series on an author and I hate it I'm never doing it again I really really hate it um, I did try to wait until all of the information was out I think I gave it like a week to eight days to try to like get everything but I'm not Rolling Stone so I'm not gonna reach out to people and like put myself in danger because I'm not a journalist. I'm just trying to get all the information so that I can condense it in one place so that in case everybody you know doesn't want to go looking for screenshots on their own I can sit here and read all of them to them. That's really all I do and you know again give my stupid ass commentary. Samantha ended up commenting one more time saying I spoke with Rachel in an Instagram chat. She offered to make another video about the fake screenshot that was falsely attributed to me. I understand that she can't take anyone word about something when she doesn't know them personally because it's all a big he said she said thing. The only way to prove my innocence is if Facebook was subpoenaed for my old account. I would love for that to happen. I explained that if Rachel did a follow-up video with my accusations about who really made that screenshot, it would put her in a position to be a potential target for harassment. And again, that is something I do try to avoid, although I acknowledge that sometimes the videos that I do, people feel like because I'm snarky, I deserve to be harassed, which is pretty fucking dehumanizing to to watch people say that about me. Um, so I, I do try to avoid being harassed, but like also, um, I'm just making stupid videos on the internet. I just don't really feel like, I don't know, I, every, 
everybody who knows like what happened in the last month with me being you know the subject of, of harassment by two different authors it really took a fucking toll so again if I don't reach out to you about videos and stuff um, you can publicly say in my comments hey this is wrong and I will try to fix it I'm not gonna reach out to authors for my safety I don't want to get harassed again but if I do do something wrong you can let me know and I will try to fix it I'm not trying to be a dick all the time I really am just trying to make stupid videos but I also do try to do the right thing where I can I realize that a lot of people there's like 50 or so people on the internet who fucking hate my guts and don't believe that and that's fine y'all can thumbs down my video and you know get in your group chats and shit talk me all day long that's fine by me um but the harassment I disagree that I deserve it so again if I don't reach out to authors that's why I really am trying to not put myself in the line of fire anyway I, it's really hard for me to be eloquent about that with everything that just happened in the last month with me for the record I want to state um, I don't think that Samantha, again, I don't think Samantha bullied Susan. I don't think anyone did. I think Susan is just not a good person who lies and cheats and manipulates people. And that brings me to this comment I got. I'm honestly tired of hearing about this. I'm tired of hearing about people with mental health issues doing bad things over and over, like beating a dead horse. Yeah, it wasn't good. It just feels exploitative at this point. And I'm not just talking about this incident. incident. I'm talking about anytime someone does something bad or crazy or anything outside the bounds of what people approve of. Are you serious? There are so many people making making this exact same video about the exact same thing with the same points and nothing new is added. First of all, this beanie was added. Does everybody else wear this beanie in that video? What about this shirt, huh? I, I'm sorry that you hate what YouTube is because that's what YouTube is. A lot of people talking about the same shit over and over. The only difference is the commentary from person to person. If you don't like it, I don't know what to tell you. I don't think Susan did this because of mental health issues and I don't think you do either. If you really investigate that line of thinking for even two seconds, it's gonna fall apart. There are probably here is a mental illness it's extreme self-absorption and a lack of giving a shit for other people which is why she made fake accounts to watch people mourn her she faked her death she caused a lot of harm to people and that's a fucking weird way to minimize it by saying outside the bounds of what people approve of yeah i think as a society we should not approve of what susan did because it was fucking harmful and fucked up it is morally wrong it's hurtful the people who were exploited here were the people who susan swindled and i'm trying to do the right thing by giving them a platform. If there's more that I can do if that is feasible, reasonable, you can let me know. But what we're not going to do is minimize the immense harm that Susan did upon others. Anyways, that's all for today. That's all for Susan Meachin part two. Hopefully I do not have to do a part three. Please God. And thank you to all the authors who were involved in this for coming to my comment section and talking to me and, and telling me your side of things so that I can put this out there for everybody. I appreciate y'all. Uh, thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time. Leave your comments and questions down below. Y'all be nice though because I'm I'm gonna be real picky about what's said in my comment section this time around. I'm not I'm not fucking around with this the, this time around. The the minimizing and the the mental illness talk and the the weird shit around suicide was too fucking far. So get your shit together before you leave any comments, the rest of y'all. But again, to the authors who, who came out and gave their pieces, I appreciate y'all. Um, and if you want anything known, I will leave a pinned comment and, and y'all can, you know, clear up anything else I might have misspoken or gotten wrong or anything else you want to say. I'll, I'll just put it in the pinned comments so people can read it first and foremost. All right. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye. Before I go, I have to say thank you for being a friend. And you're going to have to ignore the fact that my kids are screaming in the background. Okay, so thank you to Abby, Aiden, Alicia, uh, Allison, Andy, Anita, Artie the Ninth, Ava, Bibi, Bethann, Ray, Caitlin, Carlin, Catherine, Kathy, Celia, Cheyenne, Chris, CJ, Corwin, Corey, Darren, Deandra, Deborah, Diet Goth, Dorian, Douglas, Ebby, Eden, Elise, Elia, Emily, Faith, Grace, Gracie, Haley, Hannah C, Hannah T, Helen, Horror Goose, India Inks, JT, Jen, Jen with two N's, Jillian, Joni, Jules, Kaylee, Kate, Katya, Keely, Kelsey, Kylie, Laura, Lauren B, Library of Scars, Martin, Maddie, Marcella, Marquita, Malara, Model RK300, Moog, Morgan R, Moth, MXDS, James, Nat, Never, Nicole R, Nicole T, Paige E, Paige P, Peggy Lou, Pixel Stars, Piravian, oh man, you're gonna have to tell me how to say that. Rachel B, Rachel S, Rachel, who's my friend on Twitter, Reba, Ren, Robin, Rowan, Samantha, Sarah, Scarlett, Shanae, Shannon, Sheena K, Shiny, Sean, Steven, Talia, Tiana, Ursula, Valentine, Ryder A, and Yesenia. Thank you all to my Potato Search Marxist for being a friend. Ooh. Mm -hmm.